Holy smokes, folks. This one is a somber one, man. Big shout out to my guy, Mike. Holy crap, man. I just, this next interview, you guys sit down, man, get some popcorn because this shit is moving. I just got to talk to the unicorn, okay? Division one college swimmer, captain of his team, Bud's a trite. Didn't make it, okay? Didn't make it. Folks, I ain't planning on taking these videos this way. It's just kind of the natural course order is starting to happen. There's so much power in this video. Learn from others' mistakes. Don't let this be you, okay? Feel what Mike is saying and try and try and try to be as prepared as you can before you go down range. Hey, man, I just want to give another shout out to Mike. Thank you for your time, man, brother. Giving me goosebumps talking to you. So much courage to come on here. So much courage to have your face on the video. Thank you, man. A thousand times over. I wish you the best of luck with your strength and conditioning business. Anybody out there can tell, man, you a straight up dude. SEC Tennessee captain of the swim team, man. Go get them. I wish you the best in life, man. For everybody else, man, I'm going to tell you right now, if you enjoy this right here, you need to smash the subscribe button. If you love it, share it with your friends because this one, my friends, is moving. Enjoy. Okay, so real quick, Mike. Man, brother, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on here. It's so crazy. I put that other video out about that young man that didn't make it. And now I got like, you know, I'm going to shoot probably five of these. But I'm going to be honest, you're, you're the fucking unicorn, bro. Like you literally are the poster boy for what I always preach. Like, like you were a division one athlete, captain of the swim team, and you enlisted with a college degree. And then it didn't go so well. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I'm going to ask you some questions, man. And just, just kind of hear your story because you literally are like, you're the poster boy of the reason why I try to tell these kids not to go enlist with a college degree. Right. Like anybody looking at the paper is going to be like, yo, there's no way Mike don't make it. Right. Captain of the mm -hmm. swim team, you know, SEC swim team, like legit ass swimming. And there's no way he won't make it. And then, you know, fast forward, he doesn't make it. And now he's sitting there looking at a career, you know, swabbing decks or whatever. But we'll get into that. I just want you to know, thank you so much, brother. Like, seriously, man, like, I know it ain't easy to come on here. But I hate to say this, but you, you, I don't know, I don't hate to say this. This is the reason we're doing this. You're going to help hundreds of people, right? Like, yep. you're going to help. Like, I was talking to a young man last night, man. 3.8 GPA, talking about enlisting. And I was just like, you just wait till this video come out tomorrow, man. Like division one athlete, same story, you know, in a rush to enlist and get, get it on, you know? So, all right, but talk to me, just like, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Like, how do you, like, what was the decision for you between enlisting and going officers and what year were we talking about? Yeah. So this was back in 2012. Um, and I was, I was class 299 and, um, as far as enlisting and going officer, um, I, you know, it was just, it was, uh, my, my chances of, of going in, getting my contract to enlist, you know, it was, it was way easier. Um, I have had two buddies who are SEAL officers and I was in contact with them and, you know, they were telling me, you know, what what it would take to go officer. And, you know, if they're like, you don't want to deal with all that stuff, then, you know, you can just enlist and you get in right away. You can always put in a package to go officer later, you know, get, get experience. So that was kind of my mindset going in. And, uh, you know, and I was, I was wanting, I was wanting to enlist. Like I was, you know, set on it. I, um, you know, I trained my ass off for two years. I was ready. I was, and if I could, you know, go so, and looking. So back, what were yeah. you, what were you running in swimming? Like when you say yeah. you're ready, what were you running? Yeah, I was running sub nine. Okay. Uh, I was swimming six minutes. Bro, like you so, ain't got to say to swimming. Yeah. I just want to know what the run time was. Yeah. Like, like and if then, you were swimming sub six minutes, like, then you, yeah. you did swim at Tennessee, which we both know you yeah. did. So like, 
Yeah, like the swimming, you a swimmer. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't it was never an issue for me. Um, and then I was uh, like 110, 115s on the sit-ups, um, 9,500 on the push-ups, and then 25 on the pull-ups. So uh, my numbers are pretty solid going in. Yo, yeah, those are those are solid numbers, right? Like, and and, and just like everybody on here that, that listens to me knows, like I'm shooting straight fire, right? Like I'm only mm-hmm. talking the truth. Like you would have had a chance of getting picked up for officers. Now I, I'm gonna throw this caveat. On. We talk about 2012. There was still seven years of war left. Mm-hmm. So like. I wouldn't have sit here and been like, look, don't go bang. You know, like the enlisted route is absolutely stupid because we got four years of, we had seven years of war left, right? We were right in the thick in 12. Cats were still chewing it up. So like, I'm not, I'm not second guessing why you went enlisted. I just, you know, the outcome is what we're kind of looking at here. Um, just, just really, you know, kind of what happened. So talk mm-hmm. to me a little bit about, so you have two buddies that are in, you know, that's how they enlisted officers. Absolutely. Back then, you know, cats weren't really necessarily running to the sound of the gunfire, you know, Lone Survivor, all those movies hadn't come out yet. It was still like, there was a still a little bit of lag in how many people were applying vice now, right? Like right now it's absolutely ludicrous. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like the process you, you, you went, put your paperwork in, drop those fire numbers you got a contract. How long did you have to wait before you shipped out? Yeah. So I think I got picked up um, sometime in March of 2012. And then I shipped out in August. Yeah. Okay. So not too long. Yep. And then you got the bud, you went to basic. Yeah. So I went to basic in August and then I went to buds prep around September and then I went to Bud's in late December. Okay, so you had straight January class, mm-hmm. February hell week, like yeah. solid ass chilly chill. Yeah. Okay. And 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 physically, when you got there, did you think you were ready? Like physically? Yeah. So one thing um, I do want to say is I, I did have a shoulder. I got a shoulder injury in prep. Um. So, and it was my own fault. Um. You know, I was, I was trying to push myself, um, you know, probably beyond what I should have. Um, and I didn't, where at? I, this was at prep and I, we were just doing obstacle course drills. So um, I, I probably could have done a better job at focusing on, you know, taking care of my body better and recovering, which is, is important. You know, I, you know, uh, as far as being in shape and everything, um, you know, I, w- I was fine there, but I was always concerned that I, I needed to do more, you know? Uh-huh. So, so I don't know how familiar you are with me or like what we kind of preach over here, but like we go to Bud's, we operate at 90%, mm-hmm. right? We save 10% for ourselves in case we absolutely need it. And then we don't take any chances on the obstacle course. Right. Yeah. We're not playing games when, 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 when you have a risk of injury, like the obstacle course, you know, I tell the story that the class ahead of me, they used to flip down the cargo net. So like grab it with their hands, flip over, grab it with their feet, flip over. The shit was cool. But then I watched the dude lawn dart from like probably 45 feet. I was like, you guys are crazy, man. Like, yeah. I ran my 845 O course and never once even came close to getting hurt or stressed. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So you got hurt doing obstacle, you know, the obstacle yeah. course doing something. Yeah. So that was in Bud's prep and it was, um, you know, it was on the parallel bars. Like I was doing, um, instead of um, alternating uh, walking with my hands, I was doing the hops okay. and I landed, I landed wrong and I felt like a, like a crunch in my shoulder. And then um and then I got pulled from training because they noticed I wasn't able to lift anything over my head. And they yep. put me, they put me LLD for three weeks. Um, and I was, you know, it sucked because I was like, oh, I'm going to get out of shape now. And um, this is going to screw everything up. But, um, you know, I did what I could to, to continue to work out. I tested out, I passed the exit test and then I went to, and then I went to buds. Um, what were, what were your exit? Like, 
you take yeah. a full PST on exit, right? Yeah. The four mile time run. Yeah, I ran a 26 four mile. Yep. Um, and then, you know, my numbers, uh, I think, you know, I was just aiming for 100, 125. And then uh, the swim, I was think it was a three mile. I think we had to do a, no, it was a thousand swim. Thousand. Um, I don't remember what my time was. It, it don't was matter. Fins, yeah. It was but, fast. Yeah. Really fast. Just say really, it was really fast. Doesn't matter what <laughs> it was. Because the six, here's the deal, man. A 26 minute, four mile, right? Like I would tell people like, but jog a 27 and a half. Right. Like I take it you was putting out on a 26 minute. Yeah, for, for sure. Right. You know, all of that stuff. Like I try to explain it. Fucking buds is two, two years long now. Mm-hmm. You got buds and then you got SQT. Put them together is two full years. And that's after you get done with boot camp and boat. That's just buds. Yeah. So you're really looking at like 18. Um, I'm sorry. You're looking at like 30 months start to finish before you actually get to the SEAL teams. 30 months is a lot of time to be putting out hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. Know? And so like you had it, you know, and, and I, and we're just kind of talking about it so that people get my thoughts on what you were doing. Right. Like mm-hmm. you run in a 26 minute, like if you were my dude, I'd be like, yo, put the brakes on, bro. Mm-hmm. I want you to jog a 27 30. You still two and a half minutes fast, but just jog a 27. And then, you know, like if you really want to run a little bit, run a 27, but you know, stay away from max effort. Yeah, for sure. And that's the one thing that's probably what I would have, would have done different is, um, you know, uh, gave that, that 10% to look out for myself and, um, you know, take care of your recovery. Cause it, it, it really is about being able to endure over the long term. Um, so anyways, uh, I got to buds and then, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was awesome. It was everything I, I was expecting. I was, I was enjoying it. And, uh, you know, I was having a lot of fun with, um, you know, that was the exact environment I wanted to be in, you know, that's all that training I went, I, I was doing and I was finally there and it was happening. Um, you know, as much as, it, as, you know, as much as it sucks and how hard it is and everything, uh, it was awesome being there. And then, uh, but the, like I said, the, the biggest struggle for me was, was dealing with the cold and, um, you know, trying to perform when you're, you know, you're freezing cold and, uh, you know, you can't feel your fingers and, and you're freezing. I mean, it's, it's a whole different beast. And, um, you know, so, you, so did, yep. so when you first got in the first phase and you started doing, you know, I don't know what the surf torture is, what we call it, but now they, they call yeah. it surf conditioning or whatever. Yeah. When you started laying in the Pacific ocean in, in January and, and I always felt like when you went over to the Bay side, it was worse. Like I thought the water temp in the Bay side was always colder. Um, I mean, we, we saw some 40 degree Bay temp waters and you know, you don't, you don't have no pants on and we were cramping. I'm like, Holy mm-hmm. crap. Like we, we froze to death or our legs ain't working. So yeah. like, did you, like as soon as you started getting those experiences at first, you know, the first week of buds, actual class up, were you, were you already starting to think in your head, holy shit, how am I going to do this? Or was it just one of those things? It was just absolutely so miserable for you. It just kind of compounded over time. Yeah. So it, it wasn't really, it, it was really in hell week because when you're going through the day to day in first phase, you know, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get to a point where this is going to end and I, I can, you know, I can recover from this. The, the day's going to, the day's going to end. And when you're in hell week, um, you know, it, it seems like it's never going to end, you know? So um, I think that's, that's really what, uh, what led me to that breaking point um, is uh You know, I, you know, we had just done base, base tour. We ran with the boats on our heads for so Monday, Monday ish. Um, yeah. So I ended up dropping in at steel pier. So it was, we had finished uh, base tour and we went to um, steel pier. We had a strip down and then go in the bay. But naked. Yeah. 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 But yeah. naked. I, so, I, you know, my, my, I tell people my steel spear experience, we were in El Nino, right. And some, I don't remember what day, um, 
it might have been Wednesday or Thursday. We got hats and coats, brother. Yeah. And, and like, like we had 20 couple, we had like 20 ish. And I just remember, I was like, yo, it gotta be like, I don't get cold. Right. So like, I, it's different for me. Like the cold wasn't mm-hmm. my kryptonite. Drown proofing wasn't my kryptonite. Right. Like mm-hmm. your experience with the cold was my experience with drown proofing. Right. I passed out and drown proofing and passed. My buddies rescued me from one foot away. I passed out. They pulled me up. You know, I passed. Somehow I passed. Okay. But like everybody, I tell everybody, everybody's going to have some demons at butts, right? Like whatever your demon is, you don't run fast enough. You drown proofing because you're negative, right? In your case, the cold, you know, the demon's going to come out. And on Steel Pier, like I tell the story, man, like stripped down, butt naked, and there was these big ass fucking bolts sticking out of the steel pier, right? On the little ledge. And I remember to myself, I was like, yo, whatever you do, don't kick those things. And literally when I jumped in the water, somehow I kicked it. I was like, oh my God, I think I broke my foot. So the whole time I'm in the water, I'm like, yo, I hope some fish don't come out here and bite my willy off, right? Like that was my whole train of thought. It was freezing. And I was like, man, this sucks. But I was the class officer, the OIC. So I was in the front of the formation and I, and like, we didn't bitch in my class. So by behind me, I just remember people were like, oh God. And I was like, yo. And they had the little guys, the little kayaks out there. And I was like, man, it's fucking freezing. And then like cats started dropping, man. They started coming out. And I was just like, well, fuck, man. And you know, we really lost, uh, you know, Lion's Lope. Did you get the Lion's Lope? Um, which, what part was where that? You're, where you're like, you, you, all of you are in like a line and you do this over by the dolphin pins. I don't, I don't remember. It that was part, like, yeah. it was like Wednesday night-ish. I okay, think, no, I, didn't, I don't I remember. Didn't it's it. all one yeah. big day to me. Yeah. We had like eight people quit, like. We had to do a lap, and I want to say the water temp was like 40 degrees, and we were getting eaten by these, like, lice things that were making us bleed. We didn't have no clothes on. So I got us out of the water, and the instructors were MFing me, and I was like, look, man, we all fucking bleeding. Something is eating us in there. We're not going back in the water. And so then they looked at us, and they were like, okay, and we got dressed, but then we came back, like, maybe two hours later, and we got back in there, and we made one lap. And then we came back and people were like locked up because it was so cold. And they're like, get back in the water. We're doing another one. And I was like, okay. So we got back in, we started going, you know, it was really slow. Like you're doing, it's so slow. And I remember we were going by the dock with another boat crew and the whole boat crew got out of the water, out of the dock and quit. Like seven people got out one time and quit. I was like, oh my, like, hmm. So, like, I mean, it's bad. Okay, so talk to me. What what was, like, you were, you were at Steel Pier, you got in the water. Did they make you lay on the metal first? Yeah, so um, we, we stripped down. Or, no, we jumped, in with our, we jumped in with our clothes on, with our uniforms on first. We got, and then we got out, and we stripped down. And then, and then they made, and then we got out, and then we did, uh, we laid down on the pier or whatever. And then they, uh, they were like, all right, you have two minutes to put your, um, your uniforms back on. And I, at that point, I couldn't even like move my fingers. I couldn't tie my, my boots. And, uh, and they were like, all right. Uh, and then we didn't make the time to like back in. So we went back in and we did it again. And then like, um, I was like slowing, I, I couldn't do it. Like I literally could not move my hands. I could not button my uniform. And, uh, so I was, you know, I weren't, weren't going to make that, that time interval. And then, uh, they were like, get back in. And then that's when I didn't jump back in. I was like, that's it for me. So. Like you just reached that point. Yeah. And let me ask you this. Um, Was it like, like, if you don't mind sharing what was going through your head, man, like what was kind of the, like. You know, what, what was going through your head when you just said, fuck it, I'm done? 
Yeah. So it, it, it's really that point where you like, you have to not care if you die, you know, and I'm serious. Like it, it, if you don't, you know, you have to keep going and pushing and not give a shit if you die, honestly. And that's, that's all I can say about that. Um, and I, I wasn't able to, um, I, w- I wasn't able to, you know, have that mindset in that moment. So I mean that's the hey brother, I'm gonna tell you right now, like our number one operating principle is I'll die before I quit. Yeah. And I explained to people, man, like I experienced it, man. Like I knew I was passing out and drown proofing for at least five minutes before I actually passed out. I'm in the pool tied up, right? Like I went to sleep in the pool. I could have not woke up, but I was gonna try to pass no matter what right but that's powerful what you're saying i mean i mean people people got to hear that because right now everybody thinks that if you want it bad enough you can get it and i'm trying to explain to to young men just like yourself and a couple young women that look man so much of this game is mental it's your mental ability to block out everything around you and just focus on what's right in front of you, you know, and, and, and it's, it, it's powerful what you're saying. Like you weren't willing to die to achieve the goal, you know, and that's at the end of the day, man, like I hate to say it, but shit, I will say probably 95% of the class is pushed to that point at some point in butts, right? I got pushed to that point in the last swim. Like I, I didn't get pushed to dying, but like I had to swim until I started crying and I broke and then my swim buddy punched me in the face and then I had to kick and I finished. Right. And I passed by like 25, 30 seconds, whatever the time was, but it was close on a two mile ocean swim, you know? So, I mean, I appreciate that, Mike. I know it ain't easy to say, you know? Okay. So talk to me, man. You, you quit at steel pier. You went back, you got warmed up, you put your uniform, you got dry clothes, you got your doctor's appointment. You know, what kind of transpired? Did you did you go to the bottle hard after that? Yeah, so I, I went and I didn't, I didn't know. I, I didn't drink or anything like that. Um, I, I, you know, I, I felt like, um, you know, it was, it was the worst feeling. You're left with this empty feeling like you're this close to you know, reaching this goal that you've had for a long time. And, and then it's just, and, and then, you, you know, there's nothing to show for your, your, uh, your transitioned over to, um, uh, I don't know, North Island or whatever. And um, yeah, it, it was hard. It, it was, I, I was in a, a, probably a deep dark depression for like six months after that um and you know i went to the i I reclassed or i I got re um reassigned or whatever i went to florida and you know then i'm i'm in this environment where you know i didn't want to be there you know i'm this isn't what i wanted this isn't what i signed up for and um i felt like i didn't fit in you know i felt like you know, I wanted to be a part of, you know, something, you know, the most elite group, the most elite warriors. And, and it was like the complete opposite of that, you know? Um, but I, I also had to learn to own up to what happened and accept it and, and, and move on, you know? Um, so how long was your enlistment? Four years. Okay. So I got out in 2016. Okay. So you did your whole four years. I mm-hmm. promoted E4 real quickly because you were already had college degree. What'd you end up getting out as an E5, E6? Yeah, I was E5. Okay. And so that whole time you enlisted, what'd you end up doing for a job? So I was uh, in aviation as a parachute rigger. And okay. um, yeah, I mean, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't a sexy job or anything, but, um, I guess it's not chip and paint. And, nope. uh, and then I got orders to Japan. So it was cool that I got to travel a bit after that. So, so you made the most of it. Yeah, for sure. So, so if you had to 
let me ask you this. I'm going to ask this a different way. If you had somebody sitting in your shoes back in 2011, would you try to vehemently get them to go in as an officer or, or would you, would you still have gone down the same path? Right? Like, like if you could talk to yourself in 2011, not knowing what happened, right. But just more so being of the mindset, like now it's, now, you know, it's a possibility. What would be your advice for the 2010, 2011 you? Yeah, I, I don't think it's a it's a matter of going enlisted or officer. It's it's a matter of um, it's a matter of uh, one taking care of yourself and making sure um, you know you're able to you're durable. It's all about durability, you know, and um, and then you know just it's hard to say it's like how do you prepare for the cold it's like nothing you do can make make that shit easier um but i would say uh you know having having a, a method some sort of of uh like a mindset tool that you can you can go to when you're in that that place of weakness that you know that can get you through that Cause, cause a lot of people are going to go through that. You're going to be tested to your breaking point and it comes down to, can you, can you stay mentally strong through that point? Yep. Yep. All right. So you end up doing your four years and then you went and used your college degree. Did you try to transition to officers at all? Did you think about flying? Did you, you think about any of the other jobs as an officer no, I didn't. Did, I, did I did my four. Years. I got, I, I uh, actually went back to school, got my master's. Um, so I used the, the GI bill that I got. Okay. Um, so that's, that's what I ended up doing. Where'd you get your master's at? So I, I got my master's at San Francisco state, um, and exercise physiology. Okay. And you're currently strength coach. I saw. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it ain't, it ain't end up bad, right? I mean, that's a powerful message, brother, like straight up, like, you know, I, 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 I can't reiterate how happy I am that you, you had the cojones to come on here. You know, you're kicking ass now in life, right? Like it, it didn't define you. It just, you know, we all got those. I tell everybody, man, we all got them. Yeah. I got them. You know, they just like, you know, I turned down Oprah Winfrey for a huge job, job offer that probably would have changed the trajectory of my life. Yeah. Right. And I, I think uh, it's important that you say you said that it doesn't define you for the longest time. It, I, I felt that way. I felt like that, that, you know, that was defining that did define me, you know? Um, and, you know, for a long time I was ashamed and I was, I felt like I let a lot of people down. Um, so, you know, it, it was, it was tough. Uh, it was a tough point, but um you know, learning to accept it and take ownership of it and, and say, Hey, this is what happened. And, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Make the best of it. You know, I just was, uh, I was reading the article on the Bonham Richard fire. Right. And then trying to say the buds, a try guy set the fire. So he didn't have to do duty. And I'm like, yo, there's some ways to try to get out of duty, but that ain't one of them. Right. Like, and, you know, I, I think it's important for a lot of people to hear because, you know, like I, there's 750 people go to Bud's every year that don't make it. 750, yeah. 200 to 250 make it, 700 to eight, 750 to 800 don't make it, right? And so it's funny because when I put that other video out the other day, I had, you know, like I just do whatever had come to me, right? And and the young man wanted to talk to me about it and he was willing to talk about it and then someone hit me up on the phone that I know really well and was like, yo, like no one is talking to the people that didn't make it. No. Yeah. One. You never hear that. You never hear that side. Yeah. And so I was like, man, and like, I'm not like, I mean, I'm at home cause I got COVID, right? Like I got COVID for five days and I got a bunch of business stuff done now. And I got a little bit of time to talk, which I never have cause I've been working 20 hours a day on this new business deal. But then it hit me. I'm like, man, there ain't, you know, like if y'all willing to talk about it, because like your story is different than the other kids. Right. 
you were prepared, you had a background, you knew two guys had been through it, you knew what you were getting into. And then, you know, when you got in the breach and went down range, you, you know, you just, at, at a point you broke. And we all, I mean, shit, I broke. I mean, I, I broke in buds. I did. I just got lucky it was in, in something that wasn't catastrophic, right? I never once thought about quitting, but like I know on that swim, that final swim, like I had swam as hard as I could for, you know, 1.9 miles of it. And then the last point one mile got me, you know? But then after that, like, I was just like, holy shit, right? You know, and John would be like, hey, motherfucker, don't make me punch you in the face. I'd be like, yeah, man, you know? And then, you know, so it happens to everybody, man. Like, and that's the thing. You just try to keep it from being fatal. All right, brother. Well, shit, man. You got any questions for me, man? No, I, I don't. But uh, I appreciate what you're doing. And um, yeah, I, uh, I I stumbled across your, your videos. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I think it's awesome uh, that, uh, you know, you're helping mentor all the, the candidates going in. And, uh, you know, I, I, I saw myself in in some of the, the, the shoes of those guys at one point. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's awesome. And, and keep doing what you're doing. Awesome, brother. Hey, Mike, man, thank you so much. You need anything, reach out, brother. I know you went straight to the conditioning. I just left college football for 15 years. You know, I, I know you, are you working private practice? What are you doing straight to conditioning wise? Yeah. So I started up my own, my own gig. Uh, I was, um, I was training at a gym and then when COVID happened, uh, it just kind of went off on my own. So I'm starting up my own business. Are you, are you focusing on swimming at all? Are you, is swimming still part of your life? It, it hasn't been. Um, but you know, it, it can be if, uh, I, I have a couple of clients that, you know, will do it on the side, but, um, not to the, no, not to, not at the level of, um, you know, what I was once doing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, brother, man. Have the great rest of your day, man. Thank you for this time, Mike. I appreciate you, Jake. Have Absolutely, a good one. Absolutely, bud. See ya. Bye. Mike, thank you so much, brother. Just want to let everybody know. Email me at jake.zwig at gmail.com. Hit up the master class. If you got questions, man, you know the PDF is free. We let it rip here. We're getting back into the videos a little bit. We got a little bit more time. So if you guys want to see me or talk to me, just shoot me an email, hit me with your questions. If I think it's worthy and we don't have 15 videos on it, we'll jump on here. Hey, if there's some, any, if there's some other guys out there that are uh, buds of trites, Green Beret of trites, you know, and you want to share your story, uh, you know, hit me up, man. I'm going to probably do a number of these because I think these are moving and they're a lot more powerful than a guy talking about how he crushed it. So hope you enjoyed the video. As always, smash the subscribe button, you know, share it with your friends and then, you know, let the word get out there. All right. One last little shout out, man. Troops Direct. Awesome charity out there, man. Sending products and, and produce to the front lines. So you guys all think that the Navy SEALs, the Green Berets, the Marsat Marines, they got all the best gear. That ain't the case. OK, that ain't the case. Troops Direct fills the hole between what the government wants to buy and what they can afford. They've went as far as giving one of my hard, heavy hitters $4,000 worth of gear that he needed in the fight in Afghanistan. So, so support Troops Direct. Man, give a dollar, give $10, give 100 All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that video, man. Have a great day. And as always, we build champions for life. <laughs>